But I was thinking, right? Talking about running, I stumbled across this amazing video of this guy that the New York Times uh, profiled called uh, Mimo, right? Um, a supposed um, immigrant. What? This is. Sorry, a supposed immigrant from Mexico. Um, illegal immigrant actually in the beginning but then he ended up getting his papers and he's um he's a very prolific runner in his age group i think he's i'm not sure how old he is i think he's at 50 something he's 50 something he must be 50 something i'm not sure how oh no he's 46 years old right he's one of the fastest he's one he's globally one of the fastest runners in his age group right in full, of, of his age group but he's very low key he works a porter job cleaning he, he's basically a, a maintenance man or like a caretaker for buildings in his local area <coughs> cleaning windows taking out the rubbish that kind of general stuff but in his spare time he just runs and runs really fucking well but he's very low key doesn't like any attention doesn't want anyone to know what he does he just does it for it's it's, it's, it's purely for his own enjoyment and it got me thinking about sharing runs on social media and just in general just being like a social media runner when i first started running uh, when i'm gonna say this this is probably for me when when was it it must have been early 2000s no no early 2000s, like 2015 maybe 13 when i first did my cup first couple of races i loved it because of that kind of side of it right the fact that you could like share your races especially with the nike run plus right the nike run the nike run app the nike the nike plus app and then it went to nike run club app that app was really integral to kind of um helping me get from being a fat slob to actually running some races and it was very interactive it had its own little social media kind of community platform side of things but then over time as per usual you know nike always have a, a way of kind of pissing in their own um cups right so they end up messing around a bit too much and now over time it's turned into a bit of a shit app it doesn't really let you the social media side of it is a bit crap it's turning around like a run club thing you can't export the data it's just gonna be shit and i felt as if like a lot of people have kind of moved off of it right and also i feel i feel as if like maybe in the last few years people have stopped kind of sharing their runs in that way like in the distance i don't know i don't really see it as much as i did in the past i think it was really big in the past about showing the route you've done how many times you're training but now so much so i think people are a bit more low-key or they've, they've switched over to the, the other app which i use now at the moment called um strava which is a little bit more Mm, professional i'd say professional say professional or a little bit more uh pro of an app to use so um with the nike strava app you don't need to really share much stuff you don't need to be all like all over social media with your thing you just run and kind of keep keep on doing your thing right let me see if i can oh man why is it not doing let me do this but anyway um let me see if i can find this i'm trying to find my Flickr account so i can see my pictures of me running but i don't really have it do i um i guess let's see if i can find it actually the thing uh barcelona half marathon so i switched over to strava too and strava doesn't necessarily allow you to you can't um you can't exactly how do you say it you can't um you can't exactly share very easily your runs on strava it doesn't really work that way so because of that, I tend it now to kind of like concentrate mostly on just running and just kind of doing my thing and keep it moving. Not really concentrating on, you know, putting my stuff up online and showing how many stuff I'm doing. So it's kind of made me question how I interact with um, social media when I'm running. And in general, I don't really, right? I tend to kind of concentrate on my running. I tend to have an audio book on, a long podcast, a new album I want to listen to, and that's about it. And I just kind of run, save the, save the um, run, and just keep it moving, save my activity, keep it moving. And plus, with I think with Strava, the only way to actually share the run it is to go back into the actual run you did once you finished it and then share it onto your social media platforms. It's a bit clunky. It's not the most easiest thing to use. So because of that, it makes it easy to just like, you know, forget about it and just keep it moving. But this video kind of expounded upon that and really made me think about it even more. So I'm going to play it for you now and then we can talk about it as we continue. Uh, here we go. It's an opinion piece. It's called, um, it's from the New York Times. It's called Meet Mimo, the Mary Condo of Fitness. In a cluttered world of uh, boutique fitness studies and high-end gear, Guillermo Pineda Morales, also known as Mima, reminds us that we don't need much to be our best. So let's play this now for you guys. Memo. Memo runs far, and Memo runs fast. And somehow, he gets faster with age. Surprise for me too. Today, Memo is one of the top 10 runners in the world for his age group. He's also a porter in an apartment building in Queens, New York. We'll come back to that later. Memo believes in three things. Hard work, never giving up, and... Actually, use two things. Fine. 
two things. That's amazing. The American fitness industry is worth over. And if you know anything about um, Mexican fighters or Mexican combat art, combat fighters or martial artists, the one thing that you will know is that they don't stop. Right? They, you have to. You literally have to kill them if, if you want to win. They will never ever stop. They'll never throw in the towel. They'll just keep coming forward no matter how many times you light them up. So imagine if you're if you have that intrinsically in you as part of your DNA from being a Mexican, right? From coming up in that culture, hard work and never giving up. And then you add in a bit of skill, a bit of talent. Woohoo! You are gonna be an absolute beast. Thirty billion dollars a year. That's a lot of fancy gear and gym memberships. Exactly. But Memo doesn't believe in gadgets. This is Memo's heart monitor. If you can't see via the podcast, he's putting his fingers next to his neck so to measure his heart rate. That's his heart monitor. <laughs> this is Memo's gym. His gym is an out- outdoor park. This is Memo's nutrition plan. And his nutrition plan is basically and rice and beans. This is Memo's locker. And he tucks in his um, sh- Memo doesn't in believe in swanky gyms or boutique yoga studios. He doesn't believe in self-promotion. Even though there would be wow, a lot to promote. Wow, he's got tons of medals. And again, I have tons of medals too, which I, this is another thing part of me as well. I have tons of medals too, which I've never posted online, I don't think, and shown off people what I've done. I think I posted maybe a couple pictures of me finishing a race here and there. You know what I'd have to do, actually, thinking back at it. I think if I was going to start reintroducing social media posts into my training or to kind of, you know, show off how much I'm training or what I'm doing, the way that I'd do it is that I would make sure because now i haven't done it so far but i wanted to do a plan going forward where every month or every couple of days i did a race or every three weeks maybe every month but it makes more sense so at the end of the year you you maybe have between eight to twelve uh bits of bits of content or a medal to show off of your race that you've achieved because usually at the end of each race you get given a medal straight away the pictures come a little bit later but you know you've got something you can show off for the time that you run because the one thing I don't want to get caught into is the idea of like posting up your race confirmation email or showing off where you're going to run, but not actually then following through because you've already got the dopamine here or people liking that picture because, you know, that's essentially what you wanted. So if you can kind of stave it, if you kind of like pull yourself back, resist temptation, wait until you finish the race, get your medal or get your finishing picture, whatever it may be, email to your inbox, and even if it's just a proof image, and then whack that up into your, onto your social media feed, that would be a good practice to have. And then um, maybe the kind of like takeaway message from that would be for everyone else watching, would be, look, I'm doing the races, I'm completing them, and then I'm uploading my pictures. I'm not just posting. It's like what I said about how I hate um, how some of my friends always upload line sheets or PDFs or like PSD files of like T-shirts and designs they want to do. Like, no actually make the thing and then put it up that's more that that is more tangible um that's more real right that would actually spur you on to maybe actually put in some money and print your own shirts out but if you just put out the psd file it feels like you've already won uh, the jpeg of of the line sheet of your t-shirt it feels like you've already done you've already achieved it whereas if you actually put out the actual physical image it might actually spur you on to actually put some money behind it and produce some t-shirts in the end you never know and maybe as well if you post a picture of you finishing a hackney half or whatever it may be that might spur you on to do another one another one another one another one as opposed to just posting up your training pictures which is nothing really and and, and what's the and really in my opinion what's the point of running if you're not going to race right you want to race i would want to anyway yes, yes. you know what memo really believes in memo believes in running <laughs> It's my life. Make me feel free. Well, in Santa Ana Cotepec, where Memo grew up, he was an average runner on a pretty average team. It's pretty Memo awesome that he went from being average life an average runner in an average team in, in his home in his homeland of Mexico. Then he comes to the U.S. and suddenly, even with all the stresses and struggles you have of being an immigrant in a new country, learning the language, getting so settled down, somehow he's able to like improve on his running with more problems with quote unquote more problems in the back or maybe he had more problems in his homeland because that's why he moved you never know but it's still it's fucking crazy to see that he's getting actually faster the older he's becoming as opposed to the other way around where it's like oh, it's not like his heydays were back in the day when you were younger it's absolutely nuts memo crossed story. the border illegally at age 15 illegal immigrants come to sick fire at work he did find work in america in a kitchen and as a bike messenger and he ran his first marathon in 1995 a year later, he was arrested and sent to jail. I don't got no paper, so they just put me in jail for a while. So I think it was over for me. They're going to send me to Mexico, but they gave me the, the opportunity to, to see the judge and pay my file and get a lawyer. In 
In 2005, Memo passed his citizenship test and became an American citizen. Come in the States, the United States, 50 states, was the first president of the United States, George Washington. By 2019, <laughs> he became a top 10 runner globally in his age group and the second fastest American in his age group. That is amazing. Yeah, for Mexico, wow. I'll be a number one, but I, I want to represent the United States, say thank you for everything I have. That's super cool. Now, Memo works in Rigo Park as a porter. I like this building. The mayor signed for the last New York City Marathon, they put in the lobby. They say, congratulations, Memo, you do great. That was really nice for me. I made those signs. Memo awesome. took them down one by one. <laughs> He doesn't like to advertise how great of a runner he is. Which again, how imagine being imagine how weird that is now that is think of all your mates that you know who are into fitness or have a little hobby on the side and think about how often they keep reminding you of how great they are with their hobby. I think I've gone through that kind of catharsis. I've gone through that crisis in confidence in realizing that maybe the posts I used to upload all the time of more books I was reading was just a way of me to kind of mentally masturbate myself, right? Because in general, none of my friends on my social media feed are reading as much as I am or are pursuing um, or are uh, enthusiastically pursuing intellectual pursuits or whatever. I don't know that term, whatever that term is. And even me saying that is me being judgmental, but it was a way to me to kind of separate myself from the herd. But again, was I doing it because I, I was it was I doing it because I enjoyed it or was I doing it because I felt like proving how much better I was than my friends? And then I kind of realized that it might be half and half. Same with the running thing, right? I actually love running. I actually, I'm about this life, right? I go out and run most, every, mostly every single day. But if you're not on my Strava and stuff, you wouldn't know. And if I don't share it on social, no one would know. Um, but then it goes back to that whole adage, right? Um, if a tree falls, but no one hears it, did that tree actually fall? And it did. Of course it did, right? And you have to, you have to reach a point, especially when it comes to hobbies and interests, especially with stuff that's... Um, um, require some sort of physical exertion things that require some sort of um, willpower that require some sort of cardiovascular and cardiovascular endurance levels that require mental acumen you have to reach that point where you suddenly decide you know what i'm doing this because of the love and the thing that i enjoy it for what it is because if you're doing it for the approvals of others you're slowly but surely going to dwindle that willpower bar will go all the way down and really and truly if i think about it properly actually my running isn't even dependent on willpower it's because i actually enjoy doing it it might take me a while to get out. I'll be like, oh my God, I've got to put myself... But I actually love doing it. It doesn't require willpower. I don't have to like psych myself up to go running. Whereas I have to psych myself up to maybe go to the gym. But to go running, I don't have to psych myself up. I just have to just decide to put my trousers, my trousers on and my shorts on and I'm ready to go. Um, but I think in general, if you once you reach that point in all the hobbies that you do, that's when real enjoyment comes from it. The enjoyment, as much as it may seem in the beginning, it might come from, you know, how do you say it? It might come from the fact that people are liking your posts and saying how wonderful you are. The real enjoyment comes from the actual, you know, being out there running, seeing yourself improving over time, seeing your weight drop, seeing your times get quick faster and faster. That's where the real, real enjoyment comes from. I think for me anyway, personally. On November 3rd, Memo will take the day off to run the New York City Marathon. That's awesome, man. He's on track to run time faster than ever. Memo reminds us that we're being sold and packaged something that's free. Achievement doesn't come from a sports brand or the latest high-tech exactly. gizmo. I get, I agree. Just ask Memo. I get. He believes in just three... Two. Right. Two things. <laughs> Hard work and never give up. Top man. That's the Memo method. <laughs> I'll link the I'll link it in the show notes for you to check out. But yeah, that's def that Memo method is definitely something that I'm kind of thinking of going forward in all the things I do. Just work, do your thing, keep your head down. No need to boast and brag about it on social unless you're obviously creating content on it. But, you know, this idea of like social approval for the things you're doing is really ridiculous. And for the most part, that's probably why most of these social media fitness tracking app things haven't really necessarily worked out. Right. Even the stuff they've done with Sober October with Whoop. Um, I'm sure some people are going to continue using it. It's a good way maybe to track your exertion and maybe in terms of if you want to just track how much training you're doing to log your workout stuff that might be beneficial. But in general that's why probably they don't work because exercise is so hard to kind of package and to kind of uh contain in one platform in it it's really difficult to do that so far um it's hard because if you think about it, it but especially thinking about it now crossfit boxes right are probably the the living or the kind of physical manifestation of a social media right 
You've got the coaches t- giving you instructions. You've got people cheering you on in likes and comments. Um, you've got these pick. You've got these workouts that are very Instagram friendly, right? Whether it's kipping pull ups, whether it's um, snatches, whether it's box jumps, burpees, uh, pull ups. They're all very Instagram friendly, right? You can take a picture of somebody doing those kind of stuff, and it looks amazing. You're on the floor after a workout, splayed out like you've been shot. Um, you know, playing COD or something. It's all cool. But for some reason, no one's been able to take that same, to take that and actually put it in social media. I can't think of one person that's done it well. It's really hard to do, unless maybe you're a top crossfit athlete and you have your own friends, because I think in general, you have to have to take, the reason, maybe it's because you have to have someone to take a picture of you, in it, right? Even if you're running and you're doing workouts, it's hard to take a picture of yourself doing squats or doing snatches and shit. You maybe have to record a video and then maybe screenshot the video and then upload it. But for the most part, if you want to do a snatch, you have to hope people take the picture of you for you and then, then you can upload it that way. Maybe that's the reason why it's gone a bit awry. But I think in general, exercise should be a, a, a personal pursuit, something you kind of you know pursue in your own time. Um, you don't subject everyone else to your you know to your training program. And in general, if you're trying to get something out of it, whether it's getting more healthy or lose a bit of weight, why does everyone else need to be involved? Eh? Why? 